Good morning. This is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Going to take you on a little tour today. I thought I'd start with our porch with uh, the newest additions to the family, so to speak. Let's see if I can find them all. So we have babies. There's two of them. I don't see the other two just yet. Um, but we have kittens. These guys are now eight weeks old. I don't see their sisters. Um, we have two gray black tabbies and we have two gray ones. Maybe we'll see them a little bit later. But yep, they are eight weeks old. We've had them on the porch for about two weeks now. Oh, here comes one of our gray ones. Right there. There's the other one. They were taking their cat nap. So yeah, these guys have been on the outside porch for about two weeks now. They spent their first overnight last night. We've been taking them inside because we have wild animals out here. And so we're just a little overprotective of our babies. But anyways, so that's our babies for that part. This one just loves getting tangled up in the snow fence. But uh, yeah, and this is Mama. And then Aunt Sarah over here. It's been a couple weeks since that tree limb fell down. The limb that came from down there and was over here. So we got that all cleaned up. There's parts of it here of the part that actually was attached to the tree that broke off. So yeah, that's all done. So um, this is what the separate little garden area looks like. You can see it's a lot taller. I got my corn there and then I did have in the back corner there had watermelon but um, it didn't make it it died so I actually have a mint plant planted over there now and then I have my mustard greens and these are cucumbers and then along the the perimeter are uh, potatoes you can see there's a couple that are actually growing right there so um I had a bunch of potatoes in a bag that were sprouting, so I just threw them out here. And we'll add some more leaves and stuff later, but for now, that's that's what's going on there. It's going to get awfully hot today, so I'm taking the video early in the morning. This is my Celebration Squash Patch. It's doing very well. It's grown quite a bit with the heat that we've had. Um, there's also tucked in here, you can't see it because uh, the, vine, uh, the foliage is so lush now, but I also have shallots that are planted in here too to kind of keep away the, like the squash borer and things like that. And this is my glass gem corn. It's taking its sweet time to, to grow as far as height. The atomic red corn, which is what I just showed you, is, is like twice as tall, but it's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting a lot taller. And then my rose bed. Uh, my royal gold's doing really well. Um, I had thought that I had lost my other roses because they were not growing at all. And so I was like, oh man, none of them came back. But I um, noticed the other day um, that that guy's shooting some new growth there. You can, I don't know if this camera can pick it up, but just at the base there's some brand new growth. Um, and then let's see. My Neil Diamond over here. This is a really pretty um, variegated red and white rose. That one came back. You can see some new growth there. Um, but the other two, three, I haven't seen any growth on them yet, so we're waiting to see. But um, I planted in here in the meantime, in the interim, um, I had uh, too much kale um, in my one garden. So I just moved. I've got some kale planted, you know, through here. Um, that I'll fill up this space right now um, while it's still kind of bare. My grapevines are doing really well. They're really lush now and I've been slowly training them up the the pallet there and then we'll wrap them around the top as they go. And you can see in the back the morning glory. That was just like everywhere in here. Um, birds must have dropped off a bunch of seeds from somewhere else. And so morning glory's just been running rampant in here, but we've pulled it out of our garden beds as much as possible, and we keep pulling it out. It's, it's just an invasive vine. Beautiful vine, but very evasive. Invasive, whatever. <laughs> A vine. So, but anyway, 
Then you can see how much this chamomile really took off. This chamomile was, was uh, seeded from last year when I had a pot sitting right here. This is Snapdragon in this pot. Um, and then my carrots and then my lavender that's barely holding on, but it's still holding on. But, um, yeah, and of course all my um, milkweed that I leave in. I, I pulled quite a few milkweed because we had way too many. Um, but um, I do leave it where we don't have... Uh, plants for our butterflies but then I have my my potato tires these two tires looks like um, the potatoes ain't growing and probably rot but that's okay but yeah this is the pot that I had over in that other spot and I had the cameo like it does right now and this had completely reseeded itself it, it put all those plants that you just seen and then all this is from when it reseeded itself so I actually have to start harvesting my chamomile so I can preserve it for next year or over the winter or whatever. But then uh, you can see how my potatoes are doing. They're doing really well this year. I'm so thankful for that. This is brand new. This is uh, peppermint. I lost my peppermint plant last year. It didn't come back. So I planted a new one here um, along with the potatoes. Uh, mint and potatoes grow really well together. They they benefit each other very well and so yep it's in the ground and we'll see how that goes <clears throat> and then some more carrots and you can see uh, the milkweed starting to blossom it's really really pretty it's one of the reasons the monarch butterflies really like it and then my um, my radishes I hit right there I've actually got to pull all of them out I'll probably dehydrate them um, they grow a little bit faster than my husband can consume them but anyway so that's what that looks like this bed finally took off. This is my tomato bed. I've actually given quite a few of my plants fertilizer this year. They just weren't really doing very well at all as far as growth. I mean, they were, they're alive and they're nice and green, but they weren't growing. They weren't getting a uh, good size and things like that. So I um, gave all my garden this year uh, some organic fertilizer. I gave them both a, a quick liquid feed um, to help get that jump start going and then they also have a granular slow release to keep them going um, Our soil is very very poor here because the iron content in the soil is very very high and when you have a lot of iron content the iron kind of inhibits the uh, plants ability to absorb the other nutrients uh, from from what I was reading because we have um, this is very fertile ground as far as we have uh, lots of livestock that are in the area uh, cattle and, and such and so there's a lot of it's, it's fertile but because of the high iron content the plants cannot absorb the nutrients very well so we top fed them the nutrients instead of just relying on the bottom we're hoping that as this this back to Eden method um, continues. This is the third year that it'll help balance out that that nitrogen, that iron problem in the soil with time. <clears throat> but you work with what you got, and you figure out the problems, and you address them at that time. So that's what we did. We we bit the bullet and and actually used fertilizer this year, and uh, it seemed to have worked. Um, the plants are doing much much better. So this is my. Um, Basically, it's a flower bed in my garden. Um, this is where my bee balm was last year. Actually, in this spot here, I had my trellis. Um, you can watch videos from last year. I actually had a, a trellis tunnel here, and my bee balm was there, and then I had um, my potato bed that's always been there. Um, and then I grew my squash on the trellises that were here. But this year, I did something completely different uh, because we were re- reorganizing how the garden was as far as garden beds to see if we could get uh, an area that would work better uh, maximizing this usage space uh, and things like that so we redid the garden and the, the tunnel not, now got moved over there and it's used exclusively for beans and peas but uh, anyways this is bee balm and then um, because we're so into making sure that we give our pollinator friends a reason to come in here 
um, besides you know the, the vegetables and stuff um, we made sure we planted some some flowers I have some gallardias here and then uh, these are marigolds here um, I have some coxcomb and then this is amaranth um, the green amaranth and uh, that makes a really pretty flower later on so I can hardly wait to see that and then um, this year I'm trying again to grow peas or not peanuts excuse me peanuts and so that's what's right here I just planted these a couple days ago they were in um they were in, in this container and I finally put them in the ground so they're really well established enough had a great root system so I went ahead and put them in the ground and we'll see how they do um, I gave them some fertilizer too so we'll see how soon that they really start shooting off more foliage um, their flowers and then uh, the two uh, the vines that go into the ground to make the peanut part of the plant Um, my cilantro and my parsley. This is my cilantro and my parsley is over in the tire. Um, they're biennial herbs if they don't bolt. And my cilantro did not bolt last year, which was just interesting. So this year, it's, uh, it's got the regular herb down there. And then these are the, the stems that uh, make the, uh, the seeds and whatever. And I, if I remember right, cilantro, when it goes to seed, um, the seed's called coriander. Um, so we're gonna see how that goes I can already see the the flower head starting to develop on there so that'll be neat to see how that goes and then I have my sunflowers in here um, the different sunflowers that I planted because I have my lemon queens these guys all are from seed last year they dropped their own seed and I've got them all over in here uh, so those are my lemon queen but I wanted to try different varieties of sunflowers too so I have this one's called a yellow and then I have sunrise which is it's got like a yellow and red kind of color head to it looks like a sunrise and then I also have back with the um, atomic red corn I have mammoth sunflowers in that bed but um, they're not growing as big as lemon queen is yet the mammoth should be towering above my lemon queen but they're not there yet so we'll just wait and see how that goes and then my peppers um, the weather's been really wacky peppers and tomatoes like hot and it's been cold and then hot and then cold and so they really haven't had the the weather that they like to do to grow really well uh, today it's supposed to get really really hot we we're supposed to have a heat index of between 100 and 105 and uh, that's pretty hot for us um, last year we had a really cold summer comparatively so uh, that should help these guys they should be excited about that I'm not so excited but my plants will be so yeah so my dill is looking really good I have I believe and I could be wrong uh, four varieties of dill in here I know that I have uh, bouquet and then I have Ducat um, I think I have what's called mammoth and I believe I have one more but I can't remember exactly so um, I got those all during a, a seed swap so um, I thought I'd try different dill varieties and just see what they look like because I've only grown up with one type of dill and you know the Lord made quite a few varieties of each each type of uh, plant so I wanted to see what else there was out here the wind's starting to pick up a little bit we might have a rainstorm rolling through before it gets really hot uh, so this is my dino kale this is where some of that kale that I just showed you came from because I thinned it out as it's getting bigger these guys will get really really big so I thinned it out a little bit once the plants were starting to look really good because I have um, pill bugs that um, are eating my plants and so they were really struggling for a little bit because they'd shoot off this all new growth and then the pill bucks would eat, eat it so they're looking a lot better now and I have a potato half in there I got one there and I have one in my broccoli that catches the pill bucks and then you can dispose of it the next day or whatever <clears throat> and then these are all my beans and my lettuces I thinned out my lettuces last week and I'm glad I did because look at how nice and full it is um, this is butter crunch 
and I also have uh, four seasons and they are leaf lettuces you can you can pinch them off you know you can cut off the leaves and they'll put out put out more leaves or if you want you can harvest them as as the head as well and just you know leave the stem in there and I'll shoot off some more leaves you can do that as well so either way works and then I, I have some herbs just scattered in here as well <laughs> my lemon balm my lemon balm's doing really, really good. I have three plants. I have one here. I've got two down there at that end. It's doing really well, really well. Not only is it coming back every year, excuse me a minute, <coughs> excuse me, but now it's actually starting to shoot out runners. This year has been a year for runners of, of plants as far as my mints and stuff. So I have runners of lemon mint just everywhere in here. And so I've been pulling those out because I don't need mint everywhere. Um, but it's just exciting to see that these guys are are happy now and they're they're trying to spread the wealth, I guess. Back there I have um, a sweet potato vine and it's surviving. Um, here's uh, one of those other sunflowers I told you about, that sunrise. And then in the t p t uh, tires I have, uh, these are fig trees. Uh, let's see what else. I uh, planted another lim uh, bee balm. Uh, that one's supposed to be the red color. I have, I think it's purple. My original one is like a purple color. But this is supposed to be the pretty red color. So I wanted a different kind of uh, foliage colors in here. And so I got the, the red. Baker's Creek had, did not have any seeds for the red color this year at all. But I found a, a local nursery that actually did. So. We'll see how that goes. I'm really excited. And then my yellow echinacea is taking its time, but it's it's growing. I'm hoping it'll be, you know, I'll put out some flowers later this summer. I'm hoping. Well, we'll see. And then this, of course, is sage, and the sage puts out some really pretty flowers. Um, this is blue hyssop, and my bumblebee is really enjoying enjoying the blue flowers that it's putting out. So they're really happy about that. And of course, this is my echinacea, or purple coneflower, as it's commonly known. My yarrow. This plant last year was really big. It took up this whole space here. Um, but this year, I thinned it back a little bit because I didn't want it taking over the whole garden. And then I have my snapdragons in the back. My chives, I can actually deadhead this plant now because all the blooms have, have gone, um, have died. So now I can actually deadhead that. White whorehound, um, some more chamomile. This is land chamomile. It's actually supposed to be bigger than the German chamomile, but to me it looks basically the same size. In the back here I have another yarrow plant. It's a baby yarrow plant. Probably won't see flowers on it till next year. It's a pastel variety. So, And then uh, my valerian. I just can't believe how tall that gets. It gets really, really tall. So again, this is my other pepper bed, uh, I mean potato bed, with a uh, have spearmint and chocolate mint. These are in containers so they don't spread like wildfire. And then um, I'm hoping, we'll see how it goes, um, I have my own basil that I grew and then uh, tansy. So I'm hoping to put those in. Um, they're a late start this year because I didn't know that uh, I needed them, so to speak, so I planted them. And then uh, that's lemon mint, a new variety this year. So I'll see how I like that, and if I like it, I'll, I'll put it in the ground or, or somewhere where it can overwinter, and I'll have it for next year. And my, uh, however you pronounce it, I pronounce it canadula, but I heard some other people pronounce it calendula. That's what that is there. So, um, moving on, uh, this is my other beans, and of course Aunt Sarah, she's so funny. Um, I do have issues with uh, my cats liking to dig in my garden. Um, I do control it by putting upside down forks, um, plastic forks in my garden beds and so it keeps them out of there but uh, I found some interesting things in my garden like uh, my one bed had uh, 
uh, some sort of uh, carnage buried in it they had caught something and, and buried it for later but so in case you guys are wondering yes sometimes my cats do give me troubles in the garden but um overall as long as i take the appropriate actions as far as putting in the forks and if i see them when i'm out here and they're doing something they're not supposed to i correct that behavior but i let them be because they uh, do a good job of keeping out rodents and things like that that are also in here so um, I just leave them alone and let them be so this is uh, my cherry um, cherry tomatoes bumblebee cherry tomatoes um, and they grow uh, I guess they're called indeterminates they grow pretty tall and, and are kind of like viney uh, so I have them growing with my beans and then I'll I'll tie them to the trellis to give them support as, the, as they start to grow so we'll see how that goes <clears throat> and then tucked in here in my lemon queens I have uh, my kurabi I had I think it looks like about six of them actually sprout from my winter sown jugs so I tucked them in here they were getting attacked by the pill bugs too and looked kind of rough but now they're doing really really good there their foliage looks great I do have some you know um, that's being eaten but overall they're doing really good now so I'm excited about that I have um, also, looks like I'm going to have to move these guys. Uh, these are some more carrots. I have carrots planted in pots here um, in my garden. I mean, I got a big one here too because my soil is so hard and full of iron. Uh, carrots have a very hard time growing in it. So until my, my soil is much better, I grow them in pots because um, I get really good carrots that way. I don't have to fight with bugs or them trying to break through the, the hard ground and become knotted and stunted and I just don't deal with that. I just put them in pots for now. And then I also have some buckwheat growing. I just uh, threw this on the ground. It's supposed to help with um, deterring your uh, pests, the, the pests that you don't want in the garden as far as uh, the flying insects. Uh, it's a decoy plant. They will be attracted to the buckwheat instead of your other plants. And I do have a buckwheat plant over in the other spot, and I'll show you that, what it looks like as it grows. But um, I purposely planted this here, and if it goes to seed again this year, um, I'll just let it reseed itself. That way I have a spot, and I was going to make it a larger area, but I didn't have room right now. So it can grow as a decoy um, patch in the garden. <clears throat> And then tucked on this side, um, I have leeks. So, and uh, you can see all the weeds and things that are in this spot here. This was not done back to Eden style. This borders right up against the pasture. It's a cow pasture. And so the grass comes in. Um, luckily the grass is easy enough to pull up, very easy to pull up. But because I have not had the time or the um, materials to put down the the uh, cardboard and then the layers of mulch in this section this is what we deal with and so just another plug to do you know if you're trying to cut down on all the work and and things of, of weeding your garden all the time and fighting with the weeds um, put in the time and the resources to do a back to Eden heavy mulching system I mean you can see I do have weeds it's not a weed free by any means but com this compared to this which would you rather deal with so so this is my broccoli bed I have um, this is regular green broccoli and then this is purple so or purple cauliflower one of the two I can't remember what I think this is purple cauliflower so um, it'll be neat to see how these guys actually turn out I've never grown purple cauliflower before but it's really pretty, really vibrant, and the, the purple means it's got some different vitamins and antioxidants than just the green does. So that'll be really a nice addition to our, um, our plates. We're vegetarians, and so we have to make sure 
that as as vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds and beans and all that are our base that we make sure we eat a, a rainbow of food flavors stealing that from uh, skittles um, the, because uh, to get your adequate nutrition and even if you are a, a meat eater and things like that in order to get adequate nutrition you need to make sure you have a color of, of fruits and vegetables because each color represents different vitamins and minerals and so to go, get them all you need to have all sorts of colors in your in your diet so there's a plug for health there this is my Brussels sprout bed. I've tucked in some herbs too that I had to buy. I bought some more sage and stuff. So I have a new sage plant tucked in here. And then I have one tucked in over there. And then this this is exciting this year. Uh, I grew this from seed and it's, it's doing all right. This is mullein. Um, you guys have probably seen it in the wild, in the forest or like in a field or whatever. It gets really, really tall. Um, it's really, um, I don't know if you guys have seen lamb's ear or something like that, but it's a very fuzzy textured um, leaf, really fuzzy, very, very fine hairs on it. And it gets really, really, really tall when it shoots up its, its seed stalk. But mullein is very good for um, medicinal properties. Uh, you can Google it and, and check it out and uh, see you know, if that's something you want to add to your repertoire. But um, I planted these in my garden this year, so I know, you know where my herbs come from. It's great if you can find them in, a wild, in the wild in an area that you know is not sprayed with um, any sort of chemicals or whatever. And we do have state land where I got some a couple years ago. My husband actually brought me home like three plants. And I couldn't use all of it because, like I said, they get huge. I mean, really, really big. Um, but I wanted to plant them in my garden this year. And that way they're here and I know where everything came from. And mullein's one of those plants that comes back year after year after year. So to harvest a mullein, if you want to harvest it for, um, you know, for preserving, for dehydrating, the best way to do it so, so it comes back year after year is just cut it off towards the base and then, you know, leave, leave enough there that it, it can continue to grow. Kind of like you do with lettuce and things like that. You just cut, cut off what you need and then let the rest continue to grow. So again, I have lots of different bean varieties, kind of like the dill thing. Um, I wanted to try the different varieties that are out there. I have, um, this is a blue hide um, purple pole bean. I have this one I got at a seed swap. Let's see if I can see the tag. The tags are starting to wear off. So this is Triumphal Valdida or something like that. I got that in a seed swap. And then these are limas. And on the back see are the purples. These are azukis. And azukis are native to, oops, sorry. Now you can see them. Azukis are native to like Asia and those places. They're what's used in sweet bean paste and things like that in Asian dishes. And um, they're very expensive um, because of um, maybe supply and demand and whatever. But I bought um, bought some azukis from my local co-op. They they have uh, organic foods there, and so I just bought a bunch of uh, azuki beans. Um, I paid, I think, $5 for a very, very small bag. But um, I planted them, and they're growing very well. And since they're organic, they should produce uh, more beans. And then I'll have my own azuki beans uh, that will I can plant again next year. And, you know, so that $5 for a very small bag was expensive at the time. But when you think about beans and some other uh, plants that, that uh, give so much back, you know, than, that you put in, that it was a very, very um, lucrative purchase, I guess I should say. So we'll see how these guys do as far as um, if they produce or not. I'll be very excited to see that. Excuse me, Sarah. I don't want to step on you, dear. All right. This is another... These are purple cauliflowers. I can tell by the tinge of the purple on the, the leaves. And then tucked in here is also garbanzo beans. And I gave these guys some fertilizer too because I noticed some of them are dying. And again, it's a nutrient deficiency because of the high iron content in my soil. 
So um, I gave the rest of them some fertilizer, um, both fast-acting liquid and then the slow-acting continual feed. But you can see, possibly, I'm going to try to zoom in here, that they actually do have um, beans on them. So it kind of looks to me that like um, the, instead of like peas, where peas the peas are in a pod, you know, and then you open the pod to get the peas, the garbanzo beans just grow singly, kind of like berries on a berry vine. And so that's really interesting because I've never grown these before. So um, yeah, these guys I'll probably feed to my my chickens because um, they're they're dying, they're dead, and whatever, and you know it's just not gonna ripen all the way to the end but I do have some that are still alive and are lush and so hopefully they'll they'll produce really well I do have quite a few weeds in here um, that like the grass and I have some plantains and I was told that uh, with garbanzo beans they're very finicky that if you have weeds or whatever uh, just to leave them alone because if you disturb the roots of the plant um, it's detrimental so I'll probably just cut the grass and stuff down at the at the base of the plant. But yeah, so that's that. <clears throat> These are Trail of Ch Cherokee Trail of Tears beans. I got them again from a seed swap. So um, we'll see how those do. And then I have some Cantar beans tucked in here. They're bush beans with some marigolds. And this is my sweet corn. Uh, and you can see the difference between the sweet corn and the atomic uh, orange back there is uh, a lot different. Some more broccoli, and again, like I said, I had the sage tucked in here. And you can see the leaves look very lacy because of the pill bugs. And then I have another bee balm plant. I just planted that back there. Um, with my medicinal um, cupboard, use a lot of bee balm and things like that. So I want to make sure I have quite a bit of plants that can supply the demand I'm going to have for bee balm. <clears throat> and then this is my asparagus, and um, I'm trying to get this bed um, where, where it's a full asparagus bed a little bit at a time. That pot there used to have mint in it, but. Um, it didn't come back and that pot's going to be a pain in the butt to move because it's a it's a plastic pot in in the sun it just deteriorated so it's just going to be in pieces trying to move that out of here so it's going to have to sit until the fall when we can carefully uh, take it piece by piece out of here and then this is my broccoli my other broccoli and i was just really excited because i do have one large plant so far and then I got a couple more that are starting to follow on that um, and then this is my cat mint I originally had a cat mint over by the rose bed and then I moved it out of there because it gets really big mint plants get really huge so I moved it to a new location <clears throat> and then this is lemongrass this is part of the strawberry tower I, that I had built um, there's another part of it there it didn't do too well these strawberries are actually junk strawberries they're better for the birds than than us humans because the berries are so so tiny they're really 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 tiny and so it's it's not worth all the effort to try to pick a handful of these little berries and it's just a disaster so the strawberries i'm actually going to rip all the strawberries out that i have and um, those plants will go to my chickens and then i'm going to be planting i think it's called kiwanout or something like that and ozark beauty i think is the other one they're the larger strawberries um, like you see in the store the the nice size strawberries that you can actually do something with um, and i'll be planting those i can show you the berries here there is actually some right here but you can see how tiny those are and then in this I also have savory and some more snapdragons and then I planted pink hyssop so exciting there all right so we're gonna go back out this way and then I'll show you the the last part of, of the garden here and some other things um, I have also in my garden you've guys seen them before 
um, my garlic plants that I have and um, I had planted these a long time ago before we even had really an idea of what we were putting our different beds and things so um, these right now where they are they're actually in the middle of, of, of our walkway as is so I put tomato cages around them just to protect them and then um, this year when they um, die off when they're done growing we'll actually dig them up and I'll move them but um, yeah, I keep garlic and onion and things like over here. I forgot to show y'all. We'll go over there in just a second. But this is what a buckwheat plant actually looks like when it grows. So, but um, the onion plant here, um, this guy has been left in probably two or three years now. And I just leave it in the ground. Um, because it's it's here for a purpose as far as helping deter pests and it's a companion plant and then with it um it's it's you can see that companion planting works very well um these are lettuce um and i see i have some box elder bugs lovely but anyways you can see uh the lettuce just wraps right around um it was extra lettuce that i had when i had planted these guys and they're just doing really well together so yeah i just leave onions and things like that um in my garden year after year after year just for the purpose of deterring pests and, and things like that so um yeah <clears throat> this is on the back side i have planted here with my my lemon balm and of course i planted this when my lemon balm was really really small at the time and now they're growing up together but I have in here tucked, um, this is pie pumpkin. I have two, two pie pumpkins. And by the looks of the leaves, I actually have um, different, uh, different, two different um, pumpkins than I thought. Or one's a pumpkin, one's not. Because you can see, this is a very pointy lobed leaf. And then this one is rounded and not as lobed. So this is a different plant than that one is. So I'll have to see what it actually is, but that'll be interesting. And then this is my um, back area where I have my elderberry bushes and you can see how big they are getting. I'm so excited about that. But um, this is now the finished duck enclosure. If you remember, I was telling you that we had the ducks over here and then there was a wall there and it was just too small for the nine ducks that we have so we pulled the wall out so to speak and it goes right up against the garage there and so this whole area now is fenced in the ducks can use it and now they have green because this area still had lots of grass and stuff so now they have the green and dry areas and not just the it got wet and nasty and stuff back there um, so they're excited about that. They were really enjoying it yesterday. And now I have this area. This area, and my son complains a little bit now because it used to, you used to be able to just walk right through. I could get to my garden from either th that way and come back this way or this way and go that way. So now I can't do that. I have to go right back out the way I came. But I look at the positive that now I have a new section, so to speak, of my garden that I can actually use because instead of a walkway now, it's it's a section that um, I'm actually going to use for container gardening. Um, because it's right up against a duck run, uh, poetry and especially ducks, their, their waste is very um, very high in, in nitrogen and acidity and it's not, not good for growth and things like that right off the bat. So instead of planting in the ground, like a, uh, food plants or anything like that, it would not do very well because of the high high acidity and high um, nitrogen of the of the waste. They're, it's actually gonna get planted in uh, containers um, at a later time. Uh, right now I just have it set where I want it and we're actually going to set them on um, like bricks or something so these are off the ground and are stable so they don't flip over so but it's a work in progress and we are making progress so I'm excited about that here's my other elderberry bush remember me telling you this guy kept getting knocked over and broken and well you can see how big it is now I actually moved the the cage that was around it which is right there 
uh, so because it was getting big and I can basically take the PVC poles off now because uh, I'm the only one back here anymore so um, it shouldn't get bumped anymore and then tucked in even further back here um, and I'll work with this area a little bit more later on uh, is my marshmallow plants um, this area does get soppy does get marshy and so it's a perfect habitat for my marshmallow plants and so I can hardly wait to see what it looks like I only had one last year one lonely plant and it really didn't do much because it wasn't thriving in a good healthy environment but it did uh, it did make it through the winter and it did come back so I had uh, winter sown some more seeds for it and then um, they're all planted right here and we'll see how it turns out as it continues to grow so I'm excited about that and then of course right now this is my home for all the jugs that I've used this year I have them all stranded together um, in I think it's I think I have five strings of uh, rugs, jugs, so something like that. But um, until I can get them hung up, they're just kind of sitting here all nestled until I can put them away somewhere else. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, I'm really excited to see how the Lord has, has really blessed um, my efforts here. Um, just so excited to see how things grow when you follow the way that, that nature was designed with companion planting and with using the mulch system and and um, if you have some weeds that really aren't a problem just to leave them alone because they might actually not be weeds um, in, in real life they might actually be beneficial to the environment like the milkweed it is a weed for us but um, it's actually uh, meant for the environment and also plantains you saw the one with my garbanzo beans and then this is another variety of plantains this is um, narrow leaf plantain and this is actually the better one to have um, these are considered weeds um, but they're um, in reality they're a medicinal plant and um, then the dandelions we have lots of dandelions and they're considered weeds um, the only weed that I really, really deal with, um, as far as I'm concerned, is the nightshade. And the nightshade is, is for us a really bad plant to have because it's, it's like the mint plant here. It throws out runners and it grows like crazy. And nightshade is very toxic. And, um, you know, it's pretty, it has a really pretty, I think it's a purple flower, and then it's got the red berries when it fruits out. But yeah, for, for us, nightshade, as well as the morning glories, for us, those are our weeds that we deal with, that we try to keep uh, to a minimum, to a check. Every time I see a nightshade plant, I rip it out. Um, because yeah it's it's very very toxic and it's just not good for for us in our area and then the dreaded thorns um, those are a weed that we deal with and um, uh, this one I think is actually a thistle um, I can see the beautiful flower that's starting to form on that and actually because of where this is at I mean I have a baby yarrow plant right here I just showed you that earlier um, because it's back out of the way um, and it's not I'm not going to be harvesting any yarrow this year because that's a baby plant I'm going to leave this guy alone because he's not in my way or she or whatever you want to call it it's not in my way uh, it's not in the middle of a garden bed that I have to work with and that thistle actually is a very important part of the environment as well but if you have some that's in the middle of a garden bed um, pull them out because boy you do not want them stuck in your skin because that hurts and it's kind of like this guy over here I see if I can yep I can show it to you pretty good these are considered weeds let me move this actually is a weed too it's a tree that doesn't belong here but um, those are considered weeds that right there is a stinging nettle and you'll usually find that along riverbeds and in um, swampy marshy areas they like it really nice and wet Let's see if I can show it to you without getting stung so to speak 
I don't know if the camera can pick it up, you know, but they have very, very fine hairs on them, on their stems, and that's why they sting, is because of the, the um, they have a toxin that's in those, those little fine hairs, that's its defense mechanism. But for me, um, stinging nettles has a medicinal purpose to it. Um, it. It's more than just what you think. And so I keep it in a pot, that way I can keep it in check. And uh, when it goes to go to seed, I deadhead, or not deadhead, I um, cut off the seeds so it doesn't spread. But um, that's a very important plant as well. Uh, this is a weed. This is some kind of uh, bush or something um, that I didn't plant here. But um, it's a very pretty plant. Um, it's really not in my way. Uh, it's covering up this. There's a pole here and it's got, there's some other electrical stuff down there for the, the fence, uh, for the cattle fence. But it's not in the way. It's not an, in, an invasive plant. It's just growing where I necessarily wouldn't have wanted it. But again, because it's not bothering me, because it's not a poisonous plant, it's not, you know, it's not detrimental to my garden at all, I'm just leaving it alone. Same thing with all these guys here. These are lamb's quarter. And you can see I got some really, really tall, huge lamb's quarters. Um, these I will either feed to my chickens or if I feel um, jumpy enough, um, I'll eat these myself. You can use lamb's quarter, um, greens, um, like a salad if you'd like. Um, I can't remember what they're like, if they're spicy like endive or not. Or you can cook them up like spinach. Um, it's a very good plant to have. It's just, to many people, it's a weed. So, just one of the things I learned on my gardening journey that, um, you know, not everything that people say is a is a weed and you got to kill it and you know whatever uh, that's not so it's just you have to learn um, how to how to deal with the vegetation properly you can see my grass here um, is full of plantain it's just and to people who want a lush lawn this is just ugly and it needs to go and get out the roundup and you know all that but these I use for medicinal purposes. These I give to my chickens. Plantain to chickens is like chocolate is to us. So to me, these are not weeds. I mean, yeah, they don't look the greatest if I want a lush lawn by any means, but I'm not growing lawns. I'm growing food. I'm growing medicine. Um, I'm growing plants to help the pollinator friends that are struggling with all the insecticides that the, the farmers around us use. So, um, yeah, it's not about vanity for me. It's about doing what's best for the environment. Again, the same thing with the morning glory. It was all over my garden. I mean, I didn't want it because it, morning glory chokes out plants. It just wraps around them and, and chokes them out. But um, in an area where I don't have plants, like right now it's growing up my dog pen, that's perfectly fine because it's not on the ground choking my plants and things like that. And I'll have very beautiful flowers that the bees will like. What I will have to watch is because my um, uh, grapes are right here. I have to keep the morning glory in check because I can already see, like this is just a mess right here. We haven't cleaned this up at all. Um, is the morning glory will go up my 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 uh, grapevines and choke them out. So I do have to make sure that the runners from the glory that I um, keep them in check. But other than that, I just let it be, and um, and I'll allow nature to be where where nature can be, as long as it's not a harmful uh, thing for myself or or my animals or things like that. So that is my garden update for this week. I just thank you so much for watching. And I just love showing how um, you know blessed we are here on the homestead. Um, we don't have much um, by any means. Um, you know, as far as worldly things as though, you know, the, the world sees things. We live in a very modest home and 
and uh, things like that and we use a lot of recycled materials and um, things so we don't have to go out and purchase more items and you know it's a it's a struggle sometimes but the struggle is worth it um, you know what we learn um, how to use resources wisely how to um, find blessings and things that we weren't expecting like these babies here um, these guys were not planned at all they were an unplanned pregnancy um, but they're very very precious and I, I just thank the Lord that we we do have them and um, you know if it's his will we will find them um, good homes uh, except for smoke bomb she'll stay with us because she's a uh, she's actually the runt of the litter and we've done a lot to really um, <clears throat> preserve her life so to speak she's had a rough rough get at it but now she's doing really good so um, the journey here is more than just just the garden and and things like that and maybe you've picked up on that you know as you've stuck with me or if you're new you can see that as as we go um the gar the the journey here is about life and and everything that happens in the life and um so i'm just so thankful that i can share this with you that you guys are following me and, and you're interested in what goes on here at the homestead and uh, I'll continue to provide updates um, as we have them. And um, I hope that you are feeling inspired, um, that you uh, want to have your own little homestead, or, or even if you do different ways of using it, um, you know, whatever um, my journey can do to bless you. I just, um, that is my goal, is, is to um, share my my journey with you guys so you can be blessed and, and um, you know, you, get, you guys can grow in, in your own ways and your own journeys. And um, so from everyone here at Garden Jen's Journey, we just thank you again so much for watching. And uh, if you want to stay updated on more videos and things, make sure you um, hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell so you can be notified um, you know, when I do get those um, videos uploaded and things like that. And uh, again, I just want to thank you so much for following me on my journey. And I hope that your day is blessed. Thank you everybody for watching. Bye-bye.